lesson is going to be about story endings. As it says there, you'll need your English book and a pen, of course. And there is an example narrative that is available on Teams for you entitled The Hero. You'll need that towards the end of this lesson. So can we copy this down neatly in our books then? Let's write down today's date. Our title there is Narrative Structure Story Endings, the last part of the story mountain. And let's get this down. It says, when a reader has invested in reading your narrative, it is important that you end in a sophisticated way. So pause here so we can get all of that information down neatly. And then we'll have a look at some ways in which we can end a story. Okay, let's make sure we get this down neatly in our books then. So the side head in a circular structure and then copy down what it says. So a circular structure then, what is it? So it says, seeing your story as a complete circle is an effective way to end your story. Using the opening line, perhaps with a slight change, can give the reader a sense of closure. So I like seeing this as tying your story up neatly in a bow, making sure that your beginning links neatly with your ending. So let's have a look at some examples. You don't need to write these down. So we could have started with, I had never thought about my own mortality before. Mortality was something that was a lifetime away. So that would have been our opening line. So that would have been a reflective start if you think back to our story openings. And we could have ended with, I had never thought about my own mortality before. Mortality was something that was a lifetime away until that day. So again, we've got this idea of taking your first line and using it as your last line right at the end. And we've just added until that day at the end to show that now we've finished our story. This is a really, really clever way to show an examiner and to show me that you know how to end a story and you're not just rushing it towards the end of your time. Again, you're tying it up neatly in this idea of joining it up to the beginning, um, a bit like a circle, okay? So pause that, make sure you've got the title and what it is in your books. You don't need to copy down the examples. Okay, next then we've got a reflection. So it says, using the narrative voice to reflect on the events of a story can help to shape the reader's perspective on events. This can be in first or third person. So if you want the reader to take something away from your story, perhaps, I don't know, a sense of morals, or um, just to think about something and to think about the events of your story, you can end with a reflection. So this can be um, third person, so your character. So Tom looked back on that day and was lucky, lucky he was alive. Or it can be I in first person. So for example, that book was never to be opened again for what it has unleashed changed my life forever. So obviously um, that narrative was about a book in some way and obviously uh, caused some sort of havoc. Or I still cannot believe that I made it out alive. Obviously we changed that to third person. You'd put your character name instead of the use of I. So pause here and make sure we've got that side heading and what it is in our books. Okay, so this next one then, learning a lesson. If we think of stories that we read when we were younger, perhaps fables, learning a lesson about something. So it says, having an element of morality in your narrative can also be satisfying. Ending with a lesson learned due to the events gives a sense of purpose. So what lesson could your characters learn? Perhaps it's not to go out after dark or not to enter um, somebody's land when it says no entry, that sort of thing. So for example, I learned that day that friendship is an important bond that is never truly broken. So that one was about friendship, a nice lesson learned there. We never trespassed again. Oh dear, so something obviously happened from them entering someone else's land. So a nice lesson learned, a nice sentence that shows that um, some sort of resolution or something has been learned. It can be something positive or it can be something negative. So let's pause here, make sure we've got the side heading and what it is in our books. No need to copy down the example. Okay, this one is interesting then. It's sort of the opposite of the one we just looked at. So side heading then, not learning a lesson. 
So it says sometimes not heeding the warning of the events of a story can leave the reader keen to want more. So this is sort of a little bit like a cliffhanger um, where your character um, gives some sort of hint that they're about to repeat everything that they've just done wrong. So for example, as I slept that night, I dreamed of the open road and couldn't wait to get back on my bike. So obviously their story was about something that happened to do with a bike. Um, they haven't learned whatever happened from from whatever happened to do with their bike. They're again uh, wishing to be out on the open road um, and longing to get back on their bike. As midnight approached, I picked up my bag and headed out to go camping once more. So this could be positive. Maybe you don't want your um, character to not want to do whatever they did um, again. And perhaps it shows that they're a survivor and they managed to get through whatever it is that they faced. Okay, so pause here, side heading and what it is neatly in our books. Okay, lastly then, an unresolved ending, sometimes called a cliffhanger. We need to be careful of this one. Um, but let's see what it says. So it says, this can be a little cheesy if not done subtly, so be sure to be careful about your choice. When effective, it can make the reader wish that there was more to read. That's a brilliant way to leave your reader wishing that, you know, you didn't finish your narrative there and that there was more to come. So for example, I was drifting into a much appreciated slumber without a single worry. Then there was a knock at the door. Oh dear, obviously so something in their story was related to someone coming to tell them something or get them and it, we are given a hint, a cliffhanger that that is all about to start again. Or every, fra every face in a crowd from there on reminded me of him. I awaited a tap on my shoulder. Okay, so we never get to know there. Does this person come back? Do they ever experience a tap on their shoulder that they're waiting for? Okay, and again, it's quite subtle. It's not stopping in the end of the action. It's just um, a reflection on some sort of something that was left unresolved in their story. So pause here. Let's get that side heading down and what it is. Again, no need to copy down the examples. Okay then, here is what your assessment is going to be. You are being asked to write a narrative about a hero. Okay, so writing a story about a hero in some way. Now unfortunately, when you do your GCSEs um, next year, you, the exam board don't want you to write anything that's fantastical, that's um, a genre that could not um, be real so sci-fi there's no fairies or monsters or anything that couldn't be real life obviously you know if you're swimming in whales and your story's about a shark attack that's unlikely to happen but it's not uh, you know some sort of hybrid hybrid robotic shark it, you know it's it has to be rooted in reality okay so nothing too um out there it's obviously worth 20 marks as usual and I'll talk through the mark scheme in a moment. So how do we make this um, assessment successful then? So of course we need to follow the story mount structure. This is all in your books, how we open it, how we create tension, how we um, figure out and design a problem and resolution and then one of the ways that we've thought about to end a story here today. Include a range of punctuation. Now we need to move beyond just using full stops and commas if we can. Um, again, the more complex punctuation you use, um, the better uh, marks we're going to get. Include at least 20 ambitious words. Now lots of people ask, well, what makes a word ambitious? That is a really good question. So it is a word that is unusual in some way. Um, they're often a lot longer. They're often polysyllabic, but not necessarily. There are um, some shorter words that I would also say are ambitious. They're often hard to spell. They're often not used in, in everyday language. So rather than saying, I don't know, the tree was big, for example, you would say the tree was humongous, it was gigantic, it was mammoth. Okay, so we all know how to use different synonyms for words. Use all six descriptive techniques. Now, of course, we're writing a story, a narrative, but we have to focus closely on description as well. So you're going to have to describe the setting, the character, the events in lots of detail. So we all know that making um, a problem exciting for the reader involves including lots of close details about things. So we've looked at the six descriptive techniques. Um, have a look back at those sheets if you're not quite sure what they are. 
And then of course, organizing your work logically using paragraphs and connectives. So this ties into the story mountain structure. So we need that shape of having five parts and then remembering to use paragraphs and connective. So at the start of your paragraph, how are you going to start moving into the next phase of your story? Now here is a mark scheme then. Now this is the GCSE mark scheme. So you might not have seen this exact mark scheme before. As we know, it is split marked. So it's worth 20 marks, 10 from the left hand side and then 10 from the right hand side. So on the left, we've got communicating and organizing. So this is your ideas, your content, your organization, the techniques that you've managed to use. Have you followed the story mountain structure? That's what I'll be assessing there. Then on the right hand side is all about written accuracy, not just spelling. Um, this is punctuation, grammar, language, so your ambitious vocabulary, this comes on this right hand side here. So if we have a look at the middle band, so this is a C grade, so 12 out of 20 would um, result in you being awarded with a C. So if we start with the left hand side then, up to six marks here in this middle band. So writing is coherent and interesting. That basically means, does it make sense? And did I want to keep reading? Okay, so your story has to be exciting in some way, so build intention, have an interesting characters, unique stories. Then it says clear awareness of the reader and some techniques are used to meet their needs. So do you know how to make a reader interested in your story? So you're not just saying, I woke up and then I went to the woods and then I got lost and then I got found and then I went home. Okay, because that is boring, it has no awareness of the reader at all. The techniques then, obviously the techniques we're talking about are how we build tension, um, how we describe using the six descriptive techniques, so I'll be looking for those. How we use the five senses to guide everything we write about. How we show, don't tell. We've done lots of work on show, not tell. That is really, really important. Ideas show development and there are some interesting effects in the writing. So you've thought about your story, um, it doesn't get lost in any way. Um, and it moves through a story and builds to a problem and a resolution and then has an ending. And then the writing's organised to give sequence and structure, so paragraphs following the story mountain structure, for example. On the right hand side then are writing accurately, a good range of vocabulary, so those ambitious words. Uh, grammar is consistent, so think about whether you're writing in the past tense, has your story already happened? Is it, all, is it happening right now? I would perhaps suggest it's easier to write in past tense. Sentence structures are varied. Can you use short sentences? Do you know how to use short sentences to create tension, perhaps? Control of sentence construction is, is secure. Some of us sometimes, in an assessment, forget to use full stops even, so we need to make sure we've got those. A range of punctuation is used, so can you use more than just full stops and commas? We should be well beyond that point right now. Can we use an ellipsis? Can we use an exclamation mark? Do we know how to use brackets? What about colons and semicolons? Of course, your spelling is being marked, so is, is most of your spelling correct? And then again, tense is secure. So have you chosen which tense you're writing in and stuck with it? If we have a look at the um, star day band then, we've got mature and perceptive writing. So is this an idea um, that is woven really intricately and written in, written in a way that's very impressive? Um, have you used techniques that fully engage the reader's interests? So not just using the six techniques, but using them effectively and using them um, in an original way, so not using um, similes that I've heard before. Have you adapted a purpose and audience? So have you matched the um, instruction that I've given you? Have you developed your ideas with detail, with originality and creativity? The most important part of English, using your imagination and being creative. On the right hand side then, very similar to the C grade, but it's just that higher demand from you, a wide range of ambitious vocabulary. So not just the odd ambitious word here and there, have you consistently used ambitious words? Have you varied your sentence structures beyond just using short sentences? Have you got long complex sentences with commas and connectives? 
Um, have you got simple sentences where they're needed? And then again, using short sentences where appropriate. Again, a range of punctuation. So to hit the full marks on this side, I would expect you to use every single punctuation mark. So make sure you include them all, tick them off as you go along. Again, I would be looking for barely any spelling errors at all. So learn some complex, irregular words, words that have silent letters perhaps, words that have a French origin and therefore the spelling is slightly different. And then again, of course, all grammar should be correct, so no grammar slips whatsoever. Okay, in files then, you will find an example of um, a narrative assessment. Here's a clip of it. Here it's not the full story. It's entitled The Hero. Um, I want you to have a look at it, open it. If you can print it off, then brilliant. That would be the ideal situation. If you can't print it off, don't worry. Just open it on a device as you will need it for the next task. Okay, I want you then to mark this narrative example. So does it fit the brief of writing a narrative about a hero first of all? I'd like you to try and give it a grade. So go back and look at the mark scheme um, for, uh, earlier on in this video. Would it be a C grade, a B grade? Is it perhaps not very good? Is it, you know, is it, is it uh, down at the bottom at an E grade? I want you to give it two what went wells and then two even better when. So based on everything that we've been learning all about narrative, what went well about this example and how could it be improved? There are always improvements to make. Then I want you to answer these five um, instructions. So the first one, write down six ambitious words that it uses. That's presuming there are six ambitious words. I would, I would hope there would be much more than that. Write down an example of every descriptive technique. So find me a simile, find me a metaphor, find me personification, find me alliteration. If you can't have an example of every descriptive technique, then maybe that tells you that something needs to be improved there. Write down each punctuation mark that it uses. So a full stop, a comma, is there an exclamation mark? Are there speech marks? Are there inverted commas? Write them down as you find them. Again, if you can't write down each one because it doesn't use them all, then that tells you a way that it needs to be improved. Then I want you to identify which of the story beginnings that they used. Then I want you to identify which of the story endings that were used. I would then like you to keep this safe and we will discuss it together in our next lesson. So go along now and get the hero example out of files and complete these tasks that I've asked you to complete. As always, if you need any help, please don't hesitate to ask.